lost in the listening distance as dark locks in. <laughs> Nightfall. Good evening. Cleanliness, they say, is next to godliness. And logic, carried to its own logical conclusion, can result in madness. I wonder how the clean ultimately conclude. The play by Graham Pomeroy is called All Nighter. <laughs> Quick spin laundromat, Cheryl here. Oh, hi, Marco. Hey, did you get the job? Oh. Well, what do you expect? I mean, that whole place is one big clique. Why did Max send you there in the first place? You know, when my agent tries to shove me off on that kind of cattle call, yeah, I just tell him to shove it, you know? Hey, by the way, uh, are you going to try out for that new dinner theater? Me? Uh oh. Look, I think I got trouble. The Lady Macbeth of Market Street is at it again. Liz. Yeah, I gotta go now. Hey, look, and tell Max to get off his ass and get you on that audition list. Bye now. Liz, I, I thought you were supposed to keep these machines clean. Just look at these clothes. Mrs. Torrance, this is the cleanest laundromat in town. I. Oh, my God, how'd you do this? How did I? Look, you've left a, a crayon or a colored pen in the load. Miss, this came clean out of the washer. Whatever it is came from the dryer. And it's not ink or dye. Yeah. I guess you're right, Mrs. Torrance. It's not ink or anything like that. Well, then, what on earth is it? I can't understand, but I think it's blood. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Uh, Good morning. Burns. Have a nice day oh, now. Mr. Burns. See you later. Can you come in here for a minute? Sure. How can I help you? But Mr. Uh, can I ask you one thing? Are you a mister or an officer? Well, if I was giving you a ticket, ma'am, it'd be Officer Burns, but on the beat, I'm Charlie. Oh. And who are you when you're not Ms. Laundromat? <laughs> well, I'm Cheryl. Anytime. Uh, Cheryl. Charlie. What can I do for you, Cheryl? Well, look, I, I guess it's really nothing, you know, but there was something kind of weird happened here yesterday, first thing in the morning. Yeah? yeah? Well, one of our customers brought me her laundry. It was right out of the dryer, but it had these kind of weird stains on it, you know? Stains? Yeah, they were red, real bright, but it wasn't dye or ink. They were... I promise you won't laugh. Cross my heart. They were blood. I know they were, really. Um, uh, Charlie? Hmm? Yeah. I don't want to be a pain, but would you not do that? I mean, uh, tapping your nightstick. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a habit. Have you still got the stained clothes? Well, no. No, no Mrs. Uh, Torrance, the, the lady who's close they were, she was... Whew, she was mad. I'm not kidding. Really mad. She just... Stormed out of here with the stuff, and she swore she'd never come back. And you don't have her address? What? No, no, no. She's just a, a customer. Well, so. She cut herself on the dryer or something. Oh, no. I mean, there was blood all over the clothes. I mean, none on her hands, none. It was clean as yours or mine. You checked the machine she used? Well, after she'd gone, I. Yeah. And? Well, there was something. It wasn't much. No red. It was kind of brown. Well, I guess the heat dried it on the metal, you know? But it was red on the clothes. And, of course, you scrubbed the whole dryer right away. Oh, sure I did. And go on another house with the next guy I used it? Oh. Oh, 
I see. You mean I I didn't leave, uh, yeah. Cheryl, sure, listen, I believe you, but don't you see that even if it was blood, there were a dozen ways, accidents, innocent ways that it could have gotten there. Stage blood? I beg your pardon? Oh, I... I, I, I don't just do this for a living. I'm, I'm an actress. Oh, really? Well, it's hard getting started, you know. I'm just working here till the... The big break. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's a hell of a long time coming, you better believe it. I believe it. You know how long it takes a cop on the beat to make detective? Yeah. You know, I guess things are tough all around. Sure, but not so tough you want to whip it up, right? Stage blood. Cheryl, you know something? What? Sometimes ketchup is is just ketchup. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. You didn't have enough trouble. You mean to tell me your machines are bleeding or something? Margo, it was only one machine. It was nearly a week ago. Uh, Hasn't been any trouble since. Really freaked me out at the time, though. Look, I've decided I'm not going to make a big deal out of it, okay? Okay, but look, I do my laundry here, too, you know. That's my load over there in the dryer. What if it happens again? I can't go to my next audition looking like I just had a date with Dracula. <laughs> Marco, put a sock in it, will you? You know how much I need this job. If my customers hear my friends yapping about blood stains, what do you think? Listen, career girl, at the hours I do my laundry, you don't even have bats for customers. Oh, shut up, will you? There's somebody now. Oh, no. You know what? Do I? He's here all the time. Give me the willies. Good morning, Miss Lesby. You, that was wrong. You do have a bat. I hope I'm not disturbing you this early. <laughs> but I see there's a earlier bird than me. Lots of empty machines, Mr. Stone. Just take your pick. Oh, my, yes, yes, yes. And they'll all be clean first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. That's so important, don't you think, to have things perfectly clean? Yep, there's my drawing done. You can have my machine, Mr. Stone. I'm very hygienic. Oh, dear me, no. I'm sure it's very kind of you, but I... She's teasing you, Mr. Stone. Take a fresh one. Be my guest. Mm -hmm. I think I have the correct change. That's it. Better be sure. One moment, please. Dear. It's okay, Mr. Stone. I, I can change almost anything. Just Cheryl. Yeah? Come here a minute, will you? Now what? I'll be with you in a second, Mr. Stone. Oh, please don't trouble about me. Marco, what the hell is it? What? Why have you dumped your clothes on the floor? Look. Look at my jeans. What? What's that stuck on? Oof. Oh, God. What do you think it is? I don't know. Yes, you do. Skin. Can't be. It's human skin. Marco, come on. Look, it's some kids playing games. They did it with the blood, and now this. Oh. Well, if it is, you've got some pretty vicious kids around here. Well, you better get the police. Like hell I will. I'm going to get those little bastards myself. You know, they come in here at night, and they do stuff like this. I'm going to wash this place tonight, and when I catch them, you just wait and see what I do to them. You with me? If you're seriously going to do it, you just watch me. I guess you shouldn't be alone. Okay, you get your laundry off the floor. Don't, don't lose that whatever it is. I'll take care of old Mr. Stone. Okay. Uh, sorry, Mr. Stone, little problem with... Marco? Yeah? Did you hear the door? No. Why? Mr. Stone, he's... He's gone. You just asked me. 
I know. What time is it now? It's 4.30. Oh, God. You know, if you expect me to spend every night this week watching your damn laundromat over there just so you can catch some kids... Come on, just be grateful there's some place to sit down and have coffee and still watch the place. God, I hate the rest of my life. It hurts your eyes even from here. It's white and white. Oh. You know, a laundromat would make a really great tomb. <laughs> Marco, you're <laughs> too much. Why the hell don't you just turn off those lights, walk up at night, and spare yourself a headache? <sighs> Company policy. Insomniac's money is as good as anybody else's. Never pass up a quarter. Cheryl. What is it? Over there. Something moved. Where? To the right. Where? By the dryer wall. There's something behind the machines. Just over the top. Ah, kids. Little kids. Or somebody crouching. Let's go. this place all the time. How did they start the machine? Turn it off. Turn the damn thing off. Will you get a hold of yourself? You can't turn them off. I'll... Look! Through the glass in the machine! Oh my God! It's still moving! Oh my God! Her face... Cheryl, it's not kids. We've got to call the police. You okay, Marco? Yeah, sure, I'm fine. Frankly, you look a mess. Thanks. Been worse for you. You, you two did that show together. Yeah. You know the real hell of it. I don't like her very much. I saw it. She was pretty good. Well, maybe that's why I didn't like her. Guess it makes me a real bitch, huh? No, oh, come on. You're exhausted. We both are. Thank God for Charlie Burns. He seems really nice. Nice? I'm the sweetest pavement pounder you'll ever meet. Uh, Cheryl, yours was black with sugar. Thanks, Charlie. Margot sugar double cream, right? Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. You're welcome. You know, you've been really great. And you should see me deliver babies. Well, thanks for trying, Charlie. I guess we're a pretty poor audience right now. Was it bad? With the detectives, I mean. Well, they did their job. They were polite enough, I guess. I think we expected to be really grilled, you know. Guess life isn't really like Kojak, after all. Darn right it isn't. Do you two realize that the murderer must have still been in the building when you ran in with that washing machine going? Now, he might have been 20 feet away from you. The window in the back room... We don't see how else he could have done it. He must have dragged her in unconscious through the window. Unconscious? There was water and bloody foam in the lungs. She died in the machine. Oh, Charlie, for God's sake. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but don't you see what I'm trying to tell you? This murderer is a psychopath. Now, the detectives are sure of it. Do you know what happens when amateurs like you start playing hunt the killer with a crazy man? He, the both of you could have been killed. How do they know so much about him? Well, there are patterns in these things. I... I don't want to tell you this, but I... I guess I have to for your own protection. That girl wasn't the first actress to vanish. You mean the blood 
the first time... The blood I made fun of, yes, and, and maybe almost certainly the skin fragment you found, Margot. We think usually when he's done with his victims, he disposes of them somewhere else. Now, this time, you interrupted him before he could finish, so we found the corpse. Why? Why is he doing this with the machines? The police psychiatrist thinks he's washing them. Oh, you can't mean that. I do. Now, you're in the theater. You must have heard of Jack the Ripper. But, but they were whores. Margot, Cheryl, I don't know how to say this gently enough. Look, don't you understand? You must seem that way to him. Oh. I don't know why it could be any, any one of a thousand things. Maybe a terrible childhood or neurotic parents, religious fanatics themselves. Or even a wrenching experience with some actress. Well, look, you've got to understand. Look, look at me. Charlie, please. Look at me, both of you. And for him, you're the enemy. For whatever reason, he will kill you if he can. And, and wash us. And wash you. So, no trying to trap him. No more amateur stakeouts at the laundromat. Now leave him to us. You said it yourself, Kojak had it all wrong. Well, are you so sure you'll get it right? No. Psychopaths are the hardest of all criminals to catch. Motives are all upside down, behavior arbitrary. And the worst thing is, most of them seem just like everybody else. Except maybe some repeated mannerism they take a little too far. We got one guy because he was a compulsive gum chewer and couldn't stop. Now, look, what I'm saying, Cheryl, is I'll, I'll check on you in early morning and evening when there aren't many customers around. But whatever you do, that's both of you. Don't go out at night. to jump like that, but it isn't very often you beat me to work. Uh, My God, get a load of that noise. What have you done to the machine? Why, nothing at all, Miss Leslie. I've not yet had the opportunity to uh, activate uh, one of them. I have just arrived myself this minute. I beg your pardon? That machine was uh, going uh, when I came in. That's not mine. Well, then, who's is it? I'm afraid I have no idea. Mr. Stone, this is going to sound crazy, but would you do something for me? Why, of course, Miss Leslie. You have always been most obliging. When I come here, I would be pleased to receive... Would you it. please go and open that dryer and tell me what's inside? Why, of course, Miss Leslie, if you, uh, if you really uh, wish me to... I suppose the question of personal privacy does not arise in a laundromat, so, but I must say it seems Just rather... open it, please. Oh. Oh, Miss Leslie. Oh, no, Miss Leslie. There's somebody dead in there, isn't there? I'm afraid it's worse than that. What did you say? I'm awfully sorry about this, Miss Leslie. It's, uh, it's your friend. I believe her name is... Not... Was... Uh, Margot. And this isn't the first one, is it? No. No, it... It isn't. Miss, Miss, Miss Leslie. Miss Leslie. What do you think? 
pretty good with the detectives. I've got lots of experience. I played the show since it opened, remember? Yeah, I remember. Cheryl, some of the women we see around here, they, they've had a really tough time. They get so hard you could bounce bullets off them. Cheryl, whatever happens, don't let that happen to you, please. Why, sure, Mr. Wayne. Your little gal will just rock on the porch while you hunt the baddies in them there hills. But, officer, sir, I am getting mighty short of friends. Cheryl, we'll get him. I swear it. I don't think so. Not you. Now, you're not going to try yourself. I warned you. You warned Margot, too, officer. And where is she now? Upstairs, an autopsy being taken apart like a watch. Shh, now, look, we're, we're closing the net, I tell you. We've got a list of suspects. As long as your arm. I know. And where's it getting you? There's, um, Mr. Stone. Perfect manners. Nobody home upstairs. And you let him loose an hour ago. Three people saw him enter the laundromat a minute ahead of you. Margot had been dead for hours. Be reasonable. Reasonable? When I may be next? So you're going to walk right into his turf. In the night. His own time. Look, it's my turf, God damn it. It was my friend, it's my life, and it's my job. Right. But my career is not going that well, Charlie. One more corpse and nobody will go near that place. Quick spin laundromat shrouds while you wait. I'm the manager. I've got the key, and I'll go there when I bloody well like. And I can't stop you. Try it. Besides, they wouldn't let you stop me. What do you mean? Suppose I don't know that I'm a suspect, too? Look, okay, you're trying to protect me. Well, don't. It's motive and opportunity you look for, isn't it? Boy, if I got opportunity, I'd practically live in the place. You've got a tail on me, just the way you have on stone, right? Yes. So go there at night if you insist. If if you were smart enough to spot the tail, you can guess we have the whole area staked out. You should be all right, but... Yeah? Lock the door at night. Never mind what the owners say. I'll check every half hour on my beat. We've got the back window covered. But be careful. Tonight? If you want. Charlie? You're on. Four o'clock. Come on, Charlie. Charlie. Give me that nightstick. Coming. Hi. Hi. Is, uh, is everything okay? Quiet as a tomb. Oh. I forgot that's Margot's line. Well, come on, don't you stand there. Come in. Oh, thanks. You look bored, lady. Not even our friend could get through that stake up we've got around here. Well, you did. Oh, well, sure. I'm on the payroll. No, look, I I'm serious. I've, I've had a lot of time to think tonight. Oh, not again. Oh, shut up. Look, you said I was smart enough to see through being tailed, right? Right. Now, tell me something. How long has this place been staked out? Surrounded by plainclothes cops? Since the first murder? What do you want to know? Since the first. That's two weeks ago. And the murderer got through that ring to leave Margot's body. Now, how? Well, the back window. Well, you said it was watched. Well, things can go wrong. Don't you see? You see what? Anybody's daily routine can be discovered if you concentrate on it. When the detectives check, now, I mean check, everybody on the stakeout, there'll be a gap somewhere where there shouldn't be. 
Oh, come on. Now, Cheryl, you've been watching too much TV. Don't you understand? He was one of the watchers. The murderer was a policeman. A policeman? Now, that's where you have to start looking. And once you start, you'll pull it apart. Any cover he has, he... Why did you stop? A word. Flashed in my mind, you know, it's gone. Oh, my God. You got the word. The word is... Compulsive. He told me they caught a psychopath because he always chewed gum. That's right. What do you mean? It's like you. You're always tapping with that nightstick. Cheryl, I'm... I'm so sorry. I really cared for you. I know. Really? The detectives are very close. You'd never even get to the window. I'm very quick, you know. They train you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Sweet, Cheryl. Oh, oh, please, don't worry. You're going to be... so clean... just heard All Nighter by Graham Pomeroy. Featured in tonight's cast were Elva May Hoover as Cheryl and Don Franks as Charlie Burns, with Linda Sorensen as Margot, Ruth Springford as Mrs. Torrance, and Bud Knapp as Mr. Stone. Our recording engineer is John Jessup, with sound effects by Matt Wilcott. Production assistant this week was Peggy Este, and our story editor is now Urjo Carita. Nightfall is produced and directed for CBC Radio by Bill Howell. And now, here is a final word from your host. Hello again. Next week on Nightfall, we'll enter the mysterious realm of human consciousness. Walter, there's a thing called obsession. Forget it, Paul. Two and two make four. The Willoughby case is closed. But what if Willoughby's getting away with murder? What difference would it make? He's dead. Is he? No. They buried an empty packing case in his grave. I'm beginning to wonder if that's not possible. The Willoughby Obsession. An original play by George R. Robertson. Starring Neil Daynard and Bud Knapp. Next week. A nightfall. Until then, careful of the edge. <laughs> that was nightfall. It was clean as yours or mine. You checked the machines you used? Well, after she'd gone, I... Yeah. And? Well, there was something. It wasn't much. No red. It was kind of brown. Well, I guess the heat dried it on the metal, you know? But it was red on the clothes. And, of course, you scrubbed the whole dryer right away. Oh, sure I did. And go on another house with the next guy I used it? Oh. Oh, I see. You mean I, I didn't leave, uh, yeah. Cheryl, listen, I believe you, but... Don't you see that even if it was blood, there were a dozen ways, accidents, innocent ways that it could have gotten there? Stage blood. I beg your pardon? Oh, I... I, I, I don't just do this for a living. I'm, 
I'm an actress. Oh, really? Well, it's hard getting started, you know. I'm just working here till the... The big break. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's a hell of a long time coming, you better believe it. I believe it. You know how long it takes a cop on the beat to make detective? <laughs> yeah. You know, I guess things are tough all around. Quick spin laundromat, Cheryl here. Oh, hi, Marco. Hey, did you get the job? Oh. Well, what do you expect? I mean, that whole place is one big clique. Why did Max send you there in the first place? You know, when my agent tries to shove me off on that kind of cattle call, yeah, I just tell him to shove it, you know? Hey, by the way, uh, are you going to try out for that new dinner theater? Me? The uh -oh. Look, I think I got trouble. The Lady Macbeth of Market Street is at it again. Me? Yeah, I got to go now. Hey, look, and tell Max to get off his ass and get you on that audition list. Bye now. Me? Uh, I thought you were supposed to keep these machines clean. Just look at these clothes. Mrs. Torrance, this is the cleanest laundromat in town. I... Oh, my God, how'd you do that? How did I? Oh, look, you've left a, a crayon or a colored pen in the load. Miss, this came clean out of the washer. Whatever it is came from the dryer. And it's not ink. conclusion can result in madness. I wonder how the clean ultimately conclude. The play by Graham Pomeroy is called All Nighter. <laughs> Well, one of our customers brought me her laundry. It was right out of the dryer, but it had these kind of weird stains on it, you know? Stains? Yeah, they were red, real bright, but it wasn't dye or ink. They were... I promise you won't laugh. Cross my heart. They were blood. I know they were, really. Um, uh, Charlie? Hmm. I don't want to be a pain, but would you not do that? I mean, uh, tapping your nightstick. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a habit. Have you still got the stained clothes? Well, no. No, no Mrs. Uh, Torrance, the, the lady who's close they were, she was... Whew, she was mad. I'm not kidding. Really mad. She just stormed out of here with the stuff, and she swore she'd never come back. And you don't have her address? What? No, no, no. She's just a, a customer. Well, so... She cut herself on the dryer or something. Oh, no. I mean, there was blood all over the clothes. And none on her hands. None. Or it died. Yeah. I guess you're right, Mrs. Torrance. It's not ink or anything like that. Well, then. What on earth is it? I can't understand, but... I think it's... Blood. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Uh, Good morning. Burns. Have a nice day oh, now. Mr. Burns. See you later. Can you come in here for a minute? Sure. How can I help you? But Mr. Uh, can I ask you one thing? Are you a mister or an officer? Well, if I was giving you a ticket, ma'am, it'd be Officer Burns, but on the beat, I'm Charlie. Oh. And who are you when you're not Ms. Laundromat? <laughs> well, I'm Cheryl. Anytime. 
Cheryl, uh, Charlie. what can I do for you, Cheryl? Well, look, I, I guess it's really nothing, you know, but there was something kind of weird happened here yesterday, first thing in the morning.